All right, looks like we are connecting. <clears throat> and looks like we got a bunch of, uh, bunch of notifications coming in there. May need to adjust our settings. Okay, settings, go ahead and show me what you got. Nope, no additional settings there. We still need draw on top permission. It looks like uh, there is a, Hey, we got two audience members in right now, guys. This is a little bit of a test, so I'll understand if we don't have a whole lot of people coming in. Welcome. Do say hello in the chat, guys. I'm going to stop pacing so much and try to sit so this is a little bit easier to watch after we do the replay. Guys, thanks for sharing this video and uh, making sure that others are aware of it as well. I know that there's a bit of a um, you know, infinite loop there, but let's take a look at this. Today, guys, first off, markets look rough. <coughs> <coughs> Looking at this side view here, markets look really rough. Let's take a look at some applications though. The question is, right, the guys, uh, the main question is how do we, um, how do we make sure that we have uh, the, uh, that we have the ability to uh, work with applications that we need, right? Work with the applications that we need on Google. Um, with a Google phone, like the Mind Your Biz phone. And I'm using one right now, and you might be wondering, like, how in the world are you streaming to uh, to YouTube from a Google device? Well, there are several applications that don't really require you to run the Google Play services or to run them from your Google account log logged in, giving them all of the metadata about yourself. Now, I realize, I've got, again, I've got an infinite loop over there on the side. What I want to do is share my screen with you to show you a couple of applications that I use to make this much simpler. But again, say hello in the chat, guys. Do make sure that you're saying hello. I see Kevin Hawthorne from Lakeland, Florida. Thank you for being here with us live. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, let me go back to my editor, readjust the size of this video so that hopefully you'll be able to see my screen in a much easier way. All right, so I should be out of the way there. Now, we see from a desktop, a couple of applications. First is G Apps. Um, gosh, what the heck is it called? It's called um, <clears throat> it's called G Apps Browser. This is an open source application that's basically basically a sandbox. It's like a custom browser that's just for sandboxing Google applications. That's it. And it works for Google Maps, works for YouTube works for Gmail, works for Google Docs and Drive, Sheets, everything you can do from within Google Drive, you can do from within this browser. And I know it might sound weird because it's a little less comfortable than using the native application, but here's what it does. It doesn't track every single bit of your usage any more than logging in from a browser does. <clears throat> Further, you can add custom routing for your VPN for this custom browser, the G Apps browser, and it'll prevent you from being tracked that much more. All right, I'm in Google Maps right now. You see, I'm just kind of like taking a look at the Fort Lauderdale area. I got a couple of areas of interest there as well as Miami. I need to plan a trip that's coming up really, really soon. But I can also just as easily go to Google Translate and see how fast that is. It's as fast as any other browser, really lightweight, and it, it kind of cuts out all of the additional metadata collection. Here, let's go with just a quick test. I'm gonna tell it, let's test. Do, do, do this service. All right. And then go ahead and drop that down. Let's test things service. Nope, not let's test things service. Let's test this service. And let's see. Real-time translation, just as you'd expect from Google Translate. In fact, maybe even a little bit faster than the, the uh, mobile application when you go to the desktop browser version of this application. So going back over to Google Translate, <clears throat> I can also manage my Google accounts here, but I think one of the most important things is that Google Voice is an option. Now when I go over to Google Voice, let's just make sure that I'm in the, the right spot. Yep, got a few applications, a uh, few things that are here. Um, nothing too personal that you see right there, but I've got um, but I've got Google Voice, which allows me to sandbox some of my incoming communications, text messages and phone calls and screen them. I've been using Google Voice since before it was even acquired by Google, when it, back when it was Ring Central, And so it's kind of a big deal to me to be able to have this application available to me to check these messages, right? And to send sort of like uh, junk SMS messages to 
Google Voice, but still be able to retrieve those messages from my de-Googled device without signing into Google and having, having Google track all of the back end of my phone's operating system. So everything from Gmail to Google Voice to Calendar to Docs, I mean, there's almost nothing that you can't do from within this browser, except one thing. And for me, at least, as a YouTube creator, like right now we are on YouTube, like I'm streaming on YouTube, there's another application called Web Apps. And I've created a custom, there we go, created a, a custom version of this. <clears throat> Let's see, scroll through here, take a look at my... <coughs> now I wanna show you guys feedback, what I want to do instead, and I apologize for the cough there, guys. What I really wanna do is go to my comments. See, I wanna be able to look through my comments. This is YouTube Studio, guys. YouTube Studio is the back end that every YouTube content creator uses for getting rid of spam and making sure, oh, no, I went to my uh, went to my subtitles. Let's go to my comments. There we go. So there we go. There's somebody who was commenting on my my wallet review for the SecuX V20, and says ASMR Andy. Really, that's funny, right? I was really careful about recording that with a very nice microphone, and so it came across almost like an ASMR video, and that's just hilarious. But now for my de-Googled device, I can respond and I can give that person a thumbs up. Here I am giving Richard Holmes you know, a little heart, right? So for making that funny joke about it being an ASMR video, it's not really, but, but it is kind of funny that this person commented about that. I can also check to see which comments are held for review. You guys can see maybe, maybe something has shown up. Uh, looks like, no, I'm totally clear there. Um, I do try to clear out uh, comments that should be reviewed and maybe even removed. And I try to really stay on top of those so that it's a, it's a good environment for, um, for our community. The Deadwood is here saying we are here. Wow, you guys can totally, you know, now you can see exactly what it is that I'm seeing. Uh, Emmanuel Hemseth, mm. uh, Namseth says, hit your like on the way in. Appreciate that. Guys, let me also quickly, um, this is gonna be a short video. Go to my editor. You guys can probably see this in real time. <laughs> Uh, go to my editor and then we'll just go full screen here. But guys, <coughs> those are two applications that I use to make sure that my de-Googled phone is still, still plays nicely with Google. All of the metadata that's collected on the back end from most Google phones, right? Your, your typical full fat, plain vanilla installation of Google, it tracks your, your Wi-Fi SSID connection patterns and then sends that home as telemetry data every 15 minutes or so. It's very, very bad. Like This is basically surveillance. There's no other way of putting it. It's basically surveillance. Uh, Oliver Mayhem says, hi, from London, UK. Thank you, Oliver, for saying hello. Guys, I realize we're gonna have a, just a few uh, few people tuning in today because it's you know kind of a light day, un, you know, unscheduled stream. But the full version of Google on your phone, phones home a lot. It tells a lot about you to Google, right? And Google records that and they, they may never give up that data. Apple does the same thing. They just send smaller amounts of data back at less frequent intervals. Just, that, that bears mentioning, guys. People actually believe that Apple is somehow less of a spyware company. No, they collect data on their users just like everybody else. Google does more frequently, that's all. The de-Google devices that we sell at phone.myb.lol or over on mindyour.biz, they get rid of some of that back end, so it's not querying your, uh, your Wi-Fi SSID connection history every 15 minutes. It's not sending your GPS coordinates back to Google every 15 minutes. It's not aggregating your contacts to involuntarily place you into a contact tracing program. You would have to opt into that if you feel strongly about that. Uh, the Deadwood also chimes in and says, aren't Apple actively scanning photos? Yes, they're actively scanning photos too, guys, from both your photo roll within iPhotos as well as from uh, <clears throat> uh, Apple or iMessages. So any kind of photos that come in on iMessage, any kind of photos that are stored on your phone, they are being scanned by Apple. And they claim that they're looking for a cryptographic hash of photos that have been provided to them by law enforcement. But here's the problem with that. The dragnet is too wide, and this is too intense, too in intensely invasive a move for me to believe that. I have no history of being uh, legally involved in that way with law enforcement or with bad people. 
Apple has zero legal reason to do that to my photos. So when people say like, well, I'm not worried about it. I have nothing to hide. Well, yeah, I know I have nothing to hide too. And that's precisely why I don't want to have my stuff checked out like that. Because I know I have nothing to hide. So yeah, for Apple to, to say, to pretend like they need to scan the photos of tens or hundreds of millions of users to be able to find a handful, maybe, let's, let's go crazy here and say maybe 10,000 really bad people who hold really nasty stuff on their phones. It's just wrong. Anyway, <clears throat> that's a different topic. For right now, though, if you are moving to a de-Googled phone where you don't have to worry about Apple scanning your photos and you're moving to a de-Googled phone where you don't have to worry about Google phoning home to tell Big G, right, the Alphabet company, which Wi-Fi uh, uh, access points you've connected to and what you've been doing and where, what your GPS history is and the specific usage patterns of your data and who you've been emailing and who you've been texting and backups of everything that's been stored locally, right? Like if you wanna get rid of that, <clears throat> you may still need to use Gmail. That might still be a requirement for your work. I have a day job right now where using Gmail is a requirement. I cannot not use Gmail. So. I need to use something to work around that and still retrieve my email from my phone. Well, the two applications that I just showed you, they're available in the F-Droid repositories. They're available in F-Droid, which, which comes pre-installed on the MYB phone. Emmanuel Namseth says, what are prices? Well, uh, let me go over to mineyear.biz really fast. Uh, let me know if you guys have been able to see the screen all right. I am just testing this out. I haven't done mobile broadcasting in a while because of how tricky it can be, right? Like you guys see me right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, rescale my screen to make sure that that works correctly, right? It works as expected. <clears throat> so let's just take a look. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so many, so many things. All right, so let's go to mineyear.biz. <clears throat> and from the main page, you can see, yeah, the link directly to mineyear.biz, a no-eye de-Googled device. And currently, the, uh, the new inbox version is $649. I've been told that I need to raise those prices. The renewed version is $449. I've been told that I need to raise those prices because this comes not only with a... Uh, a privacy shield over the screen, but it also comes with a uh, high-speed charger, a, um, a phone case, and a Faraday bag. So if you want to put your phone into a, um, into a Faraday bag <clears throat> to prevent it from emitting any kind of frequencies at all that can be tracked by anything, right, by cell towers or by a wireless access point or anything else, well, it comes with that. So I've been told I need to raise these rates. I probably will be raising these rates very, very soon um, because it does take me a little bit of time to source these. And to be clear, this is not, uh, I don't have like a warehouse full of these devices. This is a flashing and preparation service. It's not, it's not me asserting that I have a warehouse full of these things. So that's why there's a little bit of lead time in sourcing them and then in flashing them, making sure they're in good shape and uh, then sending them, right? But it's done so at least domestically with $5 flat shipping in the lower 48 United States. Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that helps answer your question there. My biggest thing though, guys, is that I just wanted to show you that, um, dang, let me go ahead and reframe this again. I, I'm really, really kind of like not super happy with, um, with, how, oh, with how this works. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Put that out of door right there. So, <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> so, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that if you have a Google device, whether you flash Calyx OS on your own Pixel device or you use your own device to flash like Lineage OS or something on it and you want to just do this for yourself, fine. I encourage that. That's great. But you need to know that it's possible to use Google online services if you need to even when you have a device that doesn't run the standard Google operating system and gets rid of a lot of the spyware backend. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to talk to you about today. We'll come back to crypto market talk very, very soon. Was this helpful? Give me a thumbs up, ask a question. And of course, if you really, really liked it, do share this video. And then of course, if you're lurking, be subscribed, hit the bell icon for notification of future videos. We got a lot coming out by way of gem hunter content in the cryptocurrency markets. That's all the more reason that you have to have a secure 
mobile device. You need to be extra secure with your phones, with all of your operational security, if you're holding cryptocurrencies. They can be evaluated, they can raise in, in evaluation very, very fast. They can rise in evaluation very, very fast, putting you where you initially thought you held just a little bit of value in your cryptocurrency wallets into a position where all of a sudden you hold a lot of value. You must get more secure with the way you use phones and computers. And this is just one of those things you can do. All right, guys, thanks for watching the end of the video. Thanks for being subscribed. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face. Remember to stay private and mind your biz.